He is risen. Amen. And that's why we're here. That's why we're celebrating today. Today is Resurrection Sunday. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, has come back to life. He's risen from the dead. And since He is risen, so can we. Since He is in newness of life, we get to walk in newness of life in Him. Welcome this morning. If you're a guest, we're thankful that you're here. If you're not a guest, we're thankful you're here too. And we are a people who believe that God's Word is at the center and Jesus Christ is Lord. And so we are excited to worship our King of Kings today of all days, Easter Sunday. So if you have your bulletin, just want to point out a couple things for you just to uh, take a look at. Um, first is uh, one uh, on, let's see, one, two, three, the fourth bullet point down on the back. We just want to let you know that there is a church in the barn in the church here uh, next Sunday evening. Marvin Lee is going to be playing at that. Thank you, Marvin. Thank you for playing at that. And so we are just excited about that opportunity to come together and worship with our community. Uh, Hooves of Hope in Potomac is going to be putting that on. And so we are just excited to worship today. And so if you could, I'd like you to join me in prayer, and then we are going to hear from Teresa. So let's pray together. Father God, thank you that Jesus is risen, that you have raised him from the dead in all power and in glory, and that we get to receive from him, that we get to have the benefits of his resurrection. That since he is risen from the grave, our sin is cleared. Through faith in him, we get to have eternal life and be raised up as he is raised up. Father, I pray that you would bless our service this morning and may our hearts be ready. May our hearts be ready to worship you and give you praise. Give you thanksgiving for all that you've done for us. Lord God, you're working in all of our lives and I pray that you would help us to recognize that work and dive into that work and dive in to trusting and obeying you. And we pray all of this together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, let's begin our worship today. Teresa Smith is going to share with us, Were You There? Were you there when he rose from the tomb were you there when my jesus rose from the tomb oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble but I want to jump and sing and shout but I tremble were you there when he rose from from the Jesus rose from the grave. That's why we're here today. That's why we're here every Sunday. Jesus rose from the grave for us. I'd invite you to stand with me as we confess our faith together. The Apostles' Creed is printed here in your bulletin, and let's confess together what Christians have believed from all ages. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. As you remain standing, let's sing to the Lord, Christ arose, number 357 in your red hymnal.
The first scripture reading is found in Isaiah chapter 52, verses 13 through 15. Isaiah 52, starting with verse 13. Behold, my servant will prosper. He will be high and lifted up and greatly exalted. Just as many were astonished at you, my people, so his appearance was marred more than any man and his form more than the sun of men. Thus he will sprinkle many nations. Kings will shut their mouths on account of him. For what had not been told them, they will see, and what they had not heard, they will understand. The second scripture reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 7 through 8. 1 Corinthians 5, beginning with verse 7. Clean out the old leaven so that you may be a new lump, just as you are in fact unleavened. For Christ our Passover also has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The third scripture reading is found in Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 7. Mark 16, beginning with verse 1. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might come and anoint him. Very early on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. They were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? Looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, although it was extremely large. Entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting at the right, wearing a white robe, and they were amazed. And he said to them, do not be amazed, you are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who has been crucified. He has risen, he is not here. Behold, here is the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. May God bless the reading of his word.
you have your blue insert in your bulletin, you can pull that out. And on the one side, it says seven by seven prayer. And as we look at that, let's, let's approach the Lord in prayer together. God, our Father, we thank you for this day. Jesus lives. And I pray that that would need its way into our souls and into our hearts and into our minds. And as we celebrate today, we'd be celebrating that Jesus lives. And as we wake up tomorrow, we would know that Jesus lives. And we can face that tomorrow. No matter what is going on in life, no matter what comes our way, or no matter what's been hanging on to us for some time. God, we can face anything because Jesus faced the cross and he died for our sins and he rose from the grave and so we have power in him. God, we exalt you. We exalt you as we look at the needs on our prayer list today. Lord God, we lift up Mary Hesterberg as she has an upcoming procedure. God, may you bless her, Lord God. We pray blessings over Dalton Gernance and recovery for him. God, thank you for letting him be all totally well. We praise you for that, Lord God. And God, we lift up our other church family members. We pray for Don Crozier and Jackie Elliott and her husband Dick. We pray for Kevin Rademacher, Earl Bunting, Shar Hesterberg, Noreen Rademacher, Christina, thank you for healing in her body, Lord God, Matthew Gould and his eyes, Candy Boer, and Teresa McLean for her surgery recovery. God, we, we praise you and we bless you. And God, we ask as we lift these people up to you, God, this isn't just a name we read, but we are coming to you and asking for your power and working in their lives. God, we also lift up our families. We pray blessings over the Dean McMorris family, their recent losses. God, be gracious with them. Pray for Mel Zeck, Jim and Sherry Remington, Thomas Montgomery, Richard and Phyllis, Will Fong, John Reap, Bridget Minniga, Ryan Enan, Graydon Rademacher, and Rhonda McGreeny. God, give healing and blessing in Jesus' name. Pray for our friends Jennifer and Nora Flores, Linda T. Arks, Tiffany Johnson, and Angie Hamilton. God, and we, as we read the, about the persecuted church in Ukraine and as we, as we hear about all the, the tragedies and the loss and the war that is there, God, we pray that as you rose Jesus from the dead in power, God, that your power would be at work over there to bring repentance from wickedness, to push back the darkness and the evil, and to bring grace to the Christians there in Ukraine and all people in Ukraine. God, may you bring protection. May you give grace. May you bring peace and make this conflict stop in Jesus' name. Lord, we trust you. No matter what's going on in our world and the effects that it has here or the effects over there, God, we trust you. And we lift up your name. And God, we ask that you would do a work in the hearts of the people in charge. God, be gracious. And Lord, we pray as we continue to worship you as we continue to seek you that we would be blessed and now father we pray the prayer the lord's prayer that jesus taught us to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's continue worshiping together. We need to stand. We need to stand to sing this song.
He is risen. risen Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, that first uh, Easter Sunday morning, do you know the setting? It was not your backyard. It was not your living room. It was not a beautiful building like this. There was not a huge crowd first thing that morning. And realistically, the setting is a place that you and I, really most of us, possibly all of us, really don't enjoy going to that place. We don't enjoy frequenting for fun, for joy, going to the cemetery. The idea of being in a tomb, of checking it out, of going inside, that's not a place where you and I venture just for fun. And so we need to step back to the song that we ended our Good Friday service with, the song that Teresa helped us kind of, were you there? Asking ourselves that question, were you there? And we need to remember all that Jesus went through. We read in Isaiah 52, and if your Bibles are open, would you turn back there to Isaiah 52? And Nicholas, if you would be willing, or Benjamin, to turn that fan off, that's just really going to drive me nuts today. I don't know about you all. There's a little father-son rivalry going on in the building right now. He wanted it off. I wanted it on. Fathers, you know where, how that goes, right? In Isaiah 52, do you see in those verses that Christian read for us. What was his appearance like? His appearance was so marred to as not even resemble a human. And yet the women that morning had woken up very early to go and attend to his human body. They went back there. They went back to the place where they had seen him die. And they went back They went there, back to that grieving place, to that place of sorrow and of misery and of pain. 
We need to start there this morning. We need to remember that this morning. Many of us truly, in one way, shape, or form, our lives are kind of like the early morning experiences of those women. Some of our very Monday, when we wake up tomorrow, our Tuesday, there's going to be misery and heartache and pain and emptiness, deep sorrow. And that's how our human days sometimes are. And God is not unwilling to allow us to go there just like He allowed the women to go. And so as we go through the sermon this morning, there's a very simple question that I would ask you. Where in your lives today, where in your personal life today is the evidence of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead? Where in your life today are you finding the resurrection of Jesus at work in your life? For we all have touched sorrow. We've all touched pain, emptiness. We've touched sin. Sin has touched us. And a wonderful breath of fresh air comes into our hearts and even into that grave. We're going to see it here in a minute. When we realize and we grab a hold of the effects of the resurrection of Jesus. And I, I, I would plead with you this morning, don't miss it. Don't miss it. If you're starting to doze off already because it's warm in here or because you had a good breakfast, thank God for a good breakfast this morning. If you're starting to doze off, alert yourself right now. Don't miss the effect of finding the resurrection of Jesus at work in your life. So turn with me this morning. Back to Mark 16. We're going to look primarily at three of the verses, four of the verses. And the point, whenever we find Jesus, we will find the resurrection. Wherever you find Jesus Christ, when you seek Him and you find Him, you're going to find the power of His resurrection and His willingness to work in your very life, in your very darkness, in your sin, in your disappointment, in your addiction, in your shame, in your jealousy. When you find Jesus, there you will find His resurrection work. So would you put on your, if you will, your thinking cap, your seeking heart, and your willing mind today? Would you allow the Holy Spirit, allow Jesus to help you find Him today? Pause with me right now. Head bowed. Heart open. Lord Jesus, help us to find you today. Help us to find you, God. Help us to understand what you're wanting to give us today. We give you opportunity and permission now. Holy Spirit, teach us. Lord Jesus Christ, Father God, we submit to you in this place. Have your way through your word in our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. When you find Jesus, you will find his resurrection work just as he told you. Just as he told you. And so look with me back at Mark 16, verse 5. And re just remember those women. Entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe. And they were alarmed. And he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who is crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him, but go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. And there you will see him just as he told you. If you're taking notes, they're there in your bulletin. Point number one, who are you seeking? And maybe for far too many of us, too many times, maybe the question should be, what are you seeking? There were, I think, 300 Easter eggs in the backyard of the church. Chris, do I have that number right? Were there 300 
give or take, give or take a hundred or two. <laughs> and, and that's how many of us are living our lives. And too often, like an Easter egg hunt, we're seeking after things and we're not exactly sure what we're seeking after. And when we get it, what will it give us? So the question I really want to ask you this morning is, who are you seeking? And I want to plead with you. I want to plead with you to seek the person of Jesus Christ. Seek him out and confess, even right now where you're sitting, Father, I confess I've been seeking after and fill in the blank. Remember in verses 1 through 5, as you just kind of glance over those verses in Mark 16, there was a good group of women, but there's one problem. As those women are approaching, they have the herbs and the spices and all that they would do ceremonially to to attend to that loved one of theirs. There's one glaringly obvious problem. Who's going to roll away the stone? And by the way, it was sealed. Who's going to move that stone for those women? How is it going to be done? There are guards posted. It was sealed. There's a big problem. And so as we look at the story, which is harder for you to imagine right now in your life? Is it harder for you to imagine the physical stone being moved for you to enter into that situation and to allow Jesus to be in that situation of darkness and sorrow with you? Or is it harder for you to imagine God performing a miracle? A resurrection miracle. Which is harder for you? Would you think about this for a minute? Which is more difficult for you? God changing things in the physical realm, in your life? God providing your financial provision? Or is it harder for you to believe God to supernaturally bring something that's dead back to life? Notice what the angel says in verse 6. The angel says to these women in grief, they're in shock. They're really almost walking in horror. And he says, do not be alarmed. What an amazing statement. We're already in shock. And the angel says, do not be alarmed. And then the angel clarifies something wonderful in verse 6. Do you see it right in the middle? You seek Jesus of Nazareth. And you and I need to be remembered of that angelic word. Do not be alarmed because the one that you seek is the very important one. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the Messiah, the promised one. He is the one who was and who is and who is to come. And as you enter into that tomb, your physical, spiritual difficulty, remember this. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, even if you've been like me at times seeking things. Remember, allow the Word of God to remind you whom you seek. You seek Jesus of Nazareth. What an amazing word. But let's be honest, not everyone is. And not every moment are any of us always seeking Jesus of Nazareth. I read a wonderful article about a woman, her name is Doreen Virtue. The last page in last month's Christianity Today. Doreen Virtue was raised in the Christian Science Church. And it's amazing to hear her testimony about what Christian science teaches or what she learned, she was taught to only read a few or some of the verses in the Bible. And they ignored all of the difficult ones. They didn't read the ones they didn't like. They didn't pay any attention to Christ's death. They didn't really pay attention to a lot of the other scriptures that we we need all of it. They picked and they chose. She would have called herself a Christian. Then she went off to college, got a degree in psychology, began to write books and became very famous. And then she started to kind of hang out with, well, an interesting group, teachers of the New Age religion. In the New Age religion, she learned some really tantalizing things that helped raise her status. She became even more world-renowned as an author. Today, the article that I read in Christianity Today was entitled, Do Not Read My Books Anymore. She would declare herself and all of her literature to be false teaching. 
Not everyone today is seeking Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You know that. And sometimes we even need to confess to each other where we've been missing him and where we've been looking for something in this world. Fame, wealth, ego. That first Easter for these grief-stricken women is kind of like, listen to this, Christmas morning for some boys and girls. The boys and girls, they watch TV and how exciting all of the stores look. And they hear the stories at school of all the presents underneath the Christmas tree. And some little boys and girls all around the world go to their home, to their living room maybe, or the corner of their little one-bedroom house. And there's nothing under the Christmas tree. Even though maybe their moms and dads promised them presents. That morning, those grief-stricken women went to be with Jesus. They were seeking to be with Jesus of Nazareth, and he was not there. He was gone. And floods of wonder had to be in their minds until the angel said, Do not be. What does it say? Do not be alarmed. Do not be alarmed. The women that day, they had been there in Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. They had seen Jesus come into the city on a donkey. They had seen all of the crowds. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. They had seen Jesus exalted in the middle of all the people. And all that week, they were excited about the celebration of Passover. And that morning... Grief stricken and now overwhelmed. Now, what do we do? He's gone. He's missing. And that's where some of us have been in our lives. Where are you, Lord? Where are you, Lord, in this situation, in this broken down trouble? Lord, where are you? Are you missing in action? Where are you, Jesus of Nazareth? And the angel announced, follow with me here in the middle of verse 6, He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. And that place was eye-opening. And, and I, I believe that What the Holy Spirit would want you to do today is look again. Some of us in this place, maybe we've looked. Maybe we've lingered a little bit looking for Jesus. And I believe the Holy Spirit would want to say to you again, would you look again? Would you seek afresh and anew the risen Christ? Seek after Him. For truly every single one of us today, we are seeking truth. We're seeking to know the truth. And I want to urge you, To learn, even allow the Holy Spirit, ask Him to help you. Holy Spirit, help me to fix my eyes on Jesus. Help me to do that. Just let it be in my life that the angels would say after me, you are seeking Jesus of Nazareth. On to the second point in your notes. Again, in that day, those women, like many of us, we've been alarmed with what's been going on in our homes. Maybe alarmed at what's going in one of our children's lives. Maybe alarmed at what's going on in the media. Alarmed at what's going on in the schools. Alarmed maybe at what's going on in our own hearts. And so the second question in your notes is, what do you treasure? What do you treasure? Right now, what is very important to you? If you're all alone right now, what would you be journaling about? What would you be daydreaming about? If you could be talking one-on-one with someone, what would you be telling them right now? From this past week or the week that's in front of you, what do you treasure? In other words, what's the prize? I know at least at some family Easter egg hunts, there's a golden egg or two or three or four, and there might even be a $20 bill in one of those eggs, I was told. My wife and I grew up in different families, in my Easter egg hunt, in my, around my parents' house, we would maybe find a quarter. That would be the prize. And I remember the like, 
curiosity when Chrissy wanted to put a $5 bill and maybe even a $10 bill in an egg. And I thought, what? This is robbery. What is the prize that you're seeking? Is it a bank account? Is it a reputation? Is it a new vehicle? What is the prize? I believe the prize this morning, the exclamation point, is the last part of John 3.16. Say it with me, the first part. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The prize is that last part. Believing in Jesus means that you will not perish. But you'll have everlasting life right now. If you believe in Jesus Christ, confess with your lips, He is Lord. Believe in your heart, God raised Him from the dead. You will be saved. That's the prize. There's no better prize. You can have all of the ego and all of the fame and all of the money. And when you die... That's it. Jesus died. And He showed us exactly what He wants for us. He rose again. There's that resurrected life. We say He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Not just because it's Easter Sunday, but because it's spiritually our reality as Christians. Every single day. I'm so excited my daughter-in-law was trying to teach my grandson that statement to get ready for today. What a good mama. And uh, she would say to David, he is risen. And he would just look up at her. No, say he is risen. He is risen. And then most of the week she would say, he is risen. And he would say, amen. (laughs) Amen. That works. That's all good as long as he, I mean, he's saying so it is. Amen. Don't you just got to love little people? I am a little person, so yeah, I say yes. Come on. Prize. The prize. Can we, can we just sit down together around the campfire and really talk? You and I, we need the prize right now. We need the resurrection work of Jesus in our hearts, in our homes, in our marriages, in our in our habits, we need his resurrection work right now. I need that. I'm, we're living in this real world, and it's, it, there's some trouble, isn't there? We know about the trouble. We know about the heartache. We know about the discouragement and the depression. We know about the broken promises. We know about the emptiness of this world, how the dollar and now the five do- or the 10 or the $100 bill just slips through our fingers. Right? We know about that. Can I just talk? I just was doing some research this week and just a few little notes. This is what's really going on in the United States of America today. Many people today are seeking and they're, they're finding and they're holding on to things of this earth. They're holding on to politics. Because with politics, if you look at it today, it's different, it seems to me. In the political realm, there's power, isn't there? Aren't you seeing that? There's a power grabbing. Power power and prestige, and then you can just find one interest group and just raise that interest group up, and then they'll vote for you. There's power, power in politics. And what else? I I don't want to pick on any one religion. I had Islam and I had Buddhism, but I'm just going to focus for just a moment on the New Age movement because it stands right next to Christianity. But the weakness of the New Age movement, as it doesn't give us power, it gives us possibility And it's an encouragement to seek the God within you. And that's an empty, dark hole. If we would go down that kind of Eastern mix of religion and the tantalizing realities that the New Age movement would give us. The problem is that it's a step or a hair or a whole block away from the resurrected one, Jesus Christ. So be careful about the the world around you that is encouraging you to explore possibility. You might, you might find yourself away from Christ. The big companies around us, 
There have always been big companies, but the big companies, they're after profit. They're selling us goods and services, but they're, you know what I found out? The Lord asked me two years ago, if you, Scott, want to get involved in X, when will enough be enough? And for the big companies, more is never enough. More and more and more and more and more. And then there's that group of people around us that would check the box that they have no religion. They're, they're, they've been called the nuns. N-O-N-E-S. And, and they're, they're really, they're all about living for today. The kind of the prosperity of, of America. The prosperity of their lives. Or the simplicity. And the nuns... They have materialism. They have science. But a nun, do you know what they do not have? The people of this world are like you and me. They're just like us, except they're missing the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. They're missing the fact that Jesus came, the Son of God came, to seek after them, to seek after me, and to save us. The nuns, they don't realize one thing that's very important. Please open your ears again to this. They're missing the fact that they've sinned and they've broken God's righteous commands. And they're living. And they will meet him face to face one day. The last little group is a group that's very near and dear to many of us. The LGBTQ group. And that that group has one thing that it offers the world around us, and that's permission. Permission to rebel against the ways of God. And that, that's a very powerful gift, permission to rebel. And that, that, that rebellion is in me. It's in you. We all have a rebellious, sinful nature, but we need to surrender to God and to be like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane and say, not my will but yours be done. Can you say amen to that? I don't know about you, but I've wanted that permissiveness in my own life. I've wanted to be able to rebel against God's righteous commands. And when I run into Jesus on the cross, that, that, it's a, like a brick wall in front of me, and I run into him and I'm stopped. Remember looking back with me at verse 6. The angel said, you seek Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He was, what does it say? He was crucified. Can we say that again? He was crucified. Jesus died for you. He died for me. Just as he told us. In Matthew 17, you can write this down, verses 22 and 23, and there's many other verses like this where he predicted what would happen to him. Jesus said to them, the Son of Man is about to be delivered into the hands of men and they will kill him and he will be raised on the third day. Everything that happened to Jesus was predicted, prophesied, and he pointed to it over and over and over again. They will destroy this temple and on the third day I will rise it up again. The third question in your notes, where are you going? Look at the end of verse 7. I'm sorry, the beginning of verse 7. The angel says, but go tell. You and I have something very important to tell. And I'm going to give us three little points here, three little verses. We have something to tell, but first, before we tell, we need to find the work of the resurrection of Jesus Christ in our lives. We need to be seeking after the resurrection and asking Jesus, would you give me faith to believe you again? Would you give me that supernatural faith to wait upon you, to watch you to work supernaturally in my life? So where are you going? First of all, you're not going alone. He has gone ahead of you. Look, it's right there in Verse, well, 7. Go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going before you. Jesus went before us in everything. He already died on the cross. He rose again. He is in heaven. All of those are preparatory steps for us to be taking today. And you will see him. I don't know if that's underlined in your Bible. It should be underlined in your Bible. You will see Jesus. You will. You're going to see him face to face. 
You're going to see him in your life. As you seek after him, you're going to find him. So the first little resurrection work point is this. You can write this down. Jesus has ongoing ministry for you. As we try to answer the question, where are we going? Hopefully you're going and following in the footprints of Jesus. He has ongoing ministry for you. In Hebrews 7.25, you can write that address down and look it up later. Hebrews 7.25, Jesus is able to save to the uttermost. He's able to save all the way those who draw near to God through Jesus. Since Jesus always lives to make intercession for them. The second point is where are you going? There's resurrection work that Jesus wants to do in your life. Hear this. Jesus' death on the cross was the sin payment for you. And his resurrection from the grave is the receipt. How many of you love to get receipts? Just love to get receipts. Proof of payment. The resurrection from the grave is God the Father's proof of the receipt that Jesus died for you. And it's the proof that his blood was shed to pay for your sin. In John Verse 6, I'm sorry, chapter 6, verse 40. John 6, 40. This is, these are Jesus' words. This is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in Him should have eternal life, and I will raise Him up on the last day. It's God the Father's will that we would have eternal life, that we would live with that today, knowing that that receipt is for us in every area of our life. And the third resurrection work that we can look for is, you can write this down, Jesus shares his victory over sin with us. That's maybe the most missing part of many Christians all around the world. They claim Christ, but they continue to walk in sin. Jesus shares his victory over sin with us. And I don't know about you, but I need this today in my life. I need this today in my heart and in my mind as I walk, that I would walk carefully. <laughs> Not letting my foot go where Jesus, don't, don't step there, Scott. D -d -d don't step there. Don't, don't go that way. Stop going that way. He's so gentle with us. He's so gentle. And here's the verse that accompanies Jesus shares his victory over sin with us. 1 Peter chapter 3. Verse 18, for Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. Jesus was put to death in the flesh, and that's exactly what God wants to help you do in your own life, that you would recognize, I am dead to sin. And sin no longer has power in my life because Jesus has been given the throne of my life. Oh, can I say that again? Death has no more power in my life because Jesus has been given the right to sit on the throne of my life. Can I say that again? Because I'm not really getting any response from any of you. I'm looking for a response. Death and sin have no more place to rule in my life because I've given that with the help of the Holy Spirit. He's gently continuing to lead me there. Hey! Did somebody just turn the sprinklers on? Did some of you get hit with that a little bit? Or what happened? Whoa, I'm supposed to respond. Yes! Hey, can I tell you? It's so good to respond to truth. How many of you believe that one of those women didn't want to go to the grave that morning? I'm kind of believing that there was one or two of them that maybe just didn't really want to go. Maybe you're like one of them, that you're just not sure about going to Jesus. I want to encourage you today. If you would bow your heads right now with me. Oh, Father God, help us where we're weak in faith. Help us, Lord, where we've been rebellious in our lifestyle. Oh, God, would you help us in your tender mercy where we've been broken down under the weight of this world, under the weight of our own sin, under the troubles that you've allowed us to wander into. 
And we thank you, Jesus, that you are our gentle, resurrected Savior. We need you, Jesus. We need to be saved in this world. Oh, Father, would you help us to realize afresh and anew today our need for you, Jesus. This week, as we seek you, just like the women did, Holy Spirit, would you open up this this word, O God, of yours and help us to, to receive from it. Help us to seek Christ's work. Help each one of us to find you, Jesus, at work in our lives. Let us see you, Jesus, just as you told us. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you grab your red hymnal and let's stand together and let's sing celebrating He Lives. Let's sing together. He is risen. risen Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Now, would you try something fun with me? Would you whisper it the way you might say it in the grocery store tomorrow? He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Now, can I urge you on the phone this week, meeting with a friend, would you share, would you go and tell that he's risen indeed? Would you think about that right now? Would you think about a person that you know in your life that doesn't know Jesus yet? They've not received the salvation that Christ, wasn't that word imparts? Is that in your vocabulary, Jeannie? Imparts? He gives. He gives to you. Take it with you. The resurrection power of Jesus. Salvation. He is risen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. And let's tell, let's go and tell about Jesus. Amen.